In mathematics, the notion of permutation relates to the act of arranging all the members of a set into some sequence or order, or if the set is already ordered, rearranging its elements, a process called permuting. These differ from combinations, which are selections of some members of a set where order is disregarded. For example, written as tuples, there are six permutations of the set, one, two, three, namely, and. These are all the possible orderings of this three-element set. As another example, an anagram of a word, all of whose letters are different, is a permutation of its letters. In this example, the letters are already ordered in the original word and the anagram is a reordering of the letters. The study of permutations of finite sets is a topic in the field of combinatorics. Permutations occur, in more or less prominent ways, in almost every area of mathematics. They often arise when different orderings on certain finite sets are considered, possibly only because one wants to ignore such orderings and needs to know how many configurations are thus identified. For similar reasons permutations arise in the study of sorting algorithms in computer science. The number of permutations of n distinct objects is n factorial usually written as n, which means the product of all positive integers less than or equal to n. In algebra and particularly in group theory, a permutation of a set S is defined as a bijection from S to itself. That is, it is a function from S to S for which every element occurs exactly once as an image value. This is related to the rearrangement of the elements of S in which each element S is replaced by the corresponding F. The collection of such permutations form a group called the symmetric group of S. The key to this group's structure is the fact that the composition of two permutations results in another rearrangement. Permutations may act on structured objects by rearranging their components, or by certain replacements of symbols. In elementary combinatorics, the k permutations, or partial permutations, are the ordered arrangements of k distinct elements selected from a set. When k is equal to the size of the set, these are the permutations of the set. History the rule to determine the number of permutations of n objects was known in Indian culture at least as early as around 1150. The Lilavati by the Indian mathematician Bhaskara II contains a passage that translates to the product of multiplication of the arithmetical series, beginning and increasing by unity and continue to the number of places, will be the variations of number with specific figures. Fabian Stedman in 1677 described factorials when explaining the number of permutations of bells in change ringing. Starting from two bells, first two must be admitted to be varied in two ways, which he illustrates by showing one two and two one. He then explains that with three bells there are three times two figures to be produced out of three, which again is illustrated. His explanation involves, cast away 3, and 1.2 will remain, cast away 2, and 1.3 will remain, cast away 1, and 2.3 will remain. He then moves on to four bells and repeats the casting away argument showing that there will be four different sets of three. Effectively this is an recursive process. He continues with five bells using the casting away method and tabulates the resulting 120 combinations. At this point he gives up and remarks. Now the nature of these methods is such that the changes on one number comprehends the changes on all lesser numbers, in so much that a complete peel of changes on one number seemeth to be formed by uniting of the complete peels on all lesser numbers into one entire body. Stedman widens the consideration of permutations. He goes on to consider the number of permutations of the letters of the alphabet and horses, from a stable of 20. A first case in which seemingly unrelated mathematical questions were studied with the help of permutations occurred around 1770, when Joseph Louis Lagrange, in the study of polynomial equations, observed that properties of the permutations of the roots of an equation are related to the possibilities to solve it. This line of work ultimately resulted, through the work of Everest de Galois, in Galois theory, 
which gives a complete description of what is possible and impossible with respect to solving polynomial equations by radicals. In modern mathematics there are many similar situations in which understanding a problem requires studying certain permutations related to it. Definition and one-line notation. There are two equivalent common ways of regarding permutations, sometimes called the active and passive forms, or in older terminology, substitutions and permutations. Which form is preferable depends on the type of questions being asked in a given discipline. The active way to regard permutations of a set S is to define them as the bijections from S to itself. Thus, the permutations are thought of as functions which can be composed with each other, forming groups of permutations. From this viewpoint, the elements of S have no internal structure and are just labels for the objects being moved. One may refer to permutations of any set of n elements as permutations on n letters. In Corky's two-line notation, one lists the elements of S in the first row, and for each one its image below it in the second row. For instance, a particular permutation of the set S equals 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 can be written as this means that sigma satisfies sigma equals 2, sigma equals 5, sigma equals 4, sigma equals 3, and sigma equals 1. The elements of S may appear in any order in the first row. This permutation could also be written as the passive way to regard a permutation of the set S is an ordered arrangement of the elements of S. This is related to the active form as follows. If there is a natural order for the elements of S, say, then one uses this for the first row of the two-line notation. Under this assumption, one may omit the first row and write the permutation in one-line notation as, that is, an ordered arrangement of S. Care must be taken to distinguish one-line notation from the cycle notation described later. In mathematics literature, a common usage is to omit parentheses for one-line notation, while using them for cycle notation. The one-line notation is also called the word representation of a permutation. The example above would then be 25431 since the natural order 12345 would be assumed for the first row. This form is more compact, and is common in elementary combinatorics and computer science. It is especially useful in applications where the elements of S or the permutations are to be compared as larger or smaller. Other uses of the term permutation the concept of a permutation as an ordered arrangement admits several generalizations that are not permutations but have been called permutations in the literature. K permutations of N a weaker meaning of the term permutation, sometimes used in elementary combinatorax texts, designates those ordered arrangements in which no element occurs more than once, but without the requirement of using all the elements from a given set. These are not permutations except in special cases, but are natural generalizations of the ordered arrangement concept. Indeed, this use often involves considering arrangements of a fixed length k of elements taken from a given set of size n. In other words, these k permutations of n are the different ordered arrangements of a k element subset of an n set. These objects are also known as partial permutations or as sequences without repetition, terms that avoid confusion with the other, more common, meaning of permutation. The number of such permutations of is denoted variously by such symbols is, or, and its value is given by the product, which is zero when k greater than n, and otherwise is equal to the product is well defined without the assumption that is a non-negative integer and is of importance outside. Combinatorics as well, it is known as the Poch hammer symbol or as the th falling factorial power of. This usage of the term permutation is closely related to the term combination. A k element combination of an n set S is a k element subset of S, the elements of which are not ordered. By taking all the k element subsets of S and ordering each of them in all possible ways we obtain all the k permutations of S. 
The number of k combinations of an n set C is therefore related to the number of k permutations of n by. These numbers are also known as binomial coefficients and denoted permutations with repetition ordered arrangements of the elements of a set S of length n where repetition is allowed are called n tuples but have sometimes been referred to as permutations with repetition although they are not permutations in general. They are also called words over the alphabet S in some contexts. If the set S has K elements, the number of N tuples over S is. There is no restriction on how often an element can appear in an N tuple, but if restrictions are placed on how often an element can appear, this formula is no longer valid. Permutations of multisets if M is a finite multiset, then a multiset permutation is an ordered arrangement of elements of M in which each element appears exactly as often as is its multiplicity in M. An anagram of a word having some repeated letters is an example of a multiset permutation. If the multiplicities of the elements of M are, and their sum is N, then the number of multiset permutations of M is given by the multinomial coefficient. For example, the number of distinct anagrams of the word Mississippi is a k permutation of a multiset M is a sequence of length k of elements of M in which each element appears at most its multiplicity in M times. Circular permutations Permutations, when considered as arrangements, are sometimes referred to as linearly ordered arrangements. In these arrangements there is a first element, a second element, and so on. If, however, the objects are arranged in a circular manner this distinguished ordering no longer exists, that is, there is no first element in the arrangement. Any element can be considered as the start of the arrangement. The arrangements of objects in a circular manner are called circular permutations. These can be formally defined as equivalence classes of ordinary permutations of the objects. For the equivalence relation generated by moving the final element of the linear arrangement to its front, two circular permutations are equivalent if one can be rotated into the other. The following two circular permutations on four letters are considered to be the same. 1, 4, 4, 3, 2, 1, 2, 3. The circular arrangements are to be read counterclockwise. So the following two are not equivalent since no rotation can bring one to the other. 1, 1, 4, 3, 3, 4, 2, 2. The number of circular permutations of a set S with N elements is.